Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas McGinn, the Executive Vice President for the Physician Enterprise here at Common Spirit Health. Today is Wednesday, August 17th, and welcome to the five-minute check-in. So today, as always, we're going to talk about what's happening with Omicron across the United States and here at Common Spirit. And then we're going to have two special guests to talk to us about the upcoming fall and what we're going to be thinking and doing about influenza, COVID, and even an uptick in polio. So let's get to it and talk about COVID. First, let's take a quick look at what's happening with COVID across the United States. As you can see, hospitalizations and deaths are about where they were just about two weeks ago with 6,000 hospitalizations and just over 400 deaths. If we pause for a second and think, we've seen over 1 million deaths related to COVID and was the third leading cause of death in 2020 and 2021. But if we look at the numbers, we can see that Black, Hispanic, Latino, American Indian, Alaskan Native, and Native Hawaiian, and other Pacific Islanders have been disproportionately affected by death from COVID-19 over time. Additionally, the CDC's COVID tracker shows that lower proportion of those same groups have been vaccinated with a second booster dose. So this tells us we really need to double down and make sure all of our communities are getting the appropriate vaccinations and boosters. We know that vaccines are the solution to our problems that we're facing. And now on to my special guest to talk about the fall. Now looking ahead to the fall, we have a lot of things to discuss. We obviously have a possible resurgence of COVID with the Omicron variant. We have influenza once again. We've talked about twindemics in the past. And we've even seen discussion in the media about uh, polio. So to help me with this conversation, I have my two favorite guests with me today. We have Dr. Ankita Sagar, who is the Vice President for Clinical Standards at Common Spirit Health, and Dr. Renuga Vivekananan, who is the Chief of Infectious Disease and Assistant Professor at Creighton University. Thank you both for joining me. So I'm gonna start off right away. Renuga, uh, news out of the UK that they've approved the uh, Omicron specific uh, vaccine. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? And when? what are we gonna do here in the United States? Yeah, um, great news. Um, so Moderna and Pfizer, they both have prelim data that shows that you have higher amount of neutralizing antibody with the Omicron specific vaccine. So I'm glad UK is able to do that. And we expect in the United States, possibly we'll have the vaccines in September. But meanwhile, if you qualify for vaccine, a booster vaccine, please get it now because the infection rates are really high while we wait for the new variant uh, vaccine. To yeah. And I think it's interesting that they're not, we don't have to go through these randomized trials anymore. We look at the antibody response and we and we, and we start to, to look at that and make decisions moving forward. So Anka, let's pivot. Influenza, um, that's coming around the corner. We all have to start preparing for giving shots out in our offices and our hospitals and everywhere. What are we thinking about good, bad, flu season? Thoughts about that? Sure. So based on the Southern Hemisphere, so looking at Australia's data, they had an earlier season. So it started slightly earlier, a few weeks ahead of time. Younger population, especially school-age children and younger mm -hmm. adults, Definitely more influenza A than B, which is good because the vaccine efficacy was quite high. It was more than 93% similar to the mm. corresponding vaccine components, which is great. But bottom line is that we want everybody to be vaccinated who's over the age of six months and is able to receive the vaccine because we want to make sure all age groups are covered this year this time. Right. And so it looks like we're going to have a real flu season, um, yes. at least as far as we can tell right now. Now, you've put together an algorithm for Common Spirit. Just quick. What I know yes. that we're going to show that algorithm on the screen. Just go through this very quickly for us. Sure. What does this mean? Yeah. So symptomatic patients only, right? So they're coming in, they're saying they're symptomatic. Three things to consider. What is the rate of viral transmission in the community? Two, does this person have risk factors for severe illness because they have comorbidities or they're immunocompromised? And three, how severe are their symptoms? Because if they're moderate to severe, we should get them tested sooner than later to have access to appropriate treatment. But if they're mild, we could probably watch for 24, 48 hours and see if they need to be tested. So let's let's talk about vaccines in general. There, there's been 
information about a drop in maintenance vaccines for kids, a 1% drop demonstrated 35,000 children not getting vaccinated. And, and that, that's got huge repercussions. Renuga, talk to us a little bit about what's happening here. Yeah, definitely. We have seen a decline in vaccinations for kids. And as you could see, as an example, in New York, currently there's a case of polio, which we haven't seen in a very, very long time. Right. So it's really important to get our kids vaccinated. And as you can see on our screen, we have the vaccine schedule for polio vaccine as well. So please get our kids vaccinated and great opportunity at this time. Well, a lot of work in front of us to prepare for a, a complicated fall, potential twindemic, polio, and other vaccines. We need to really make sure we're all up to date. Thank you both again for your expert input. It's always appreciated. And we will be tapping you on the shoulder quickly to help us again in the near future. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So thanks for joining me once again in the five-minute check-in, and I'll see you all in two weeks.